Uh, hi, Abhishek. Uh, this is Manikesh. I have a quick question. So how important is uh, Python or any programming uh, language uh, for BIE or BA roles? Yeah, so that's always like a gray area. So I would say basic level of scripting is definitely like helpful, right? I wouldn't say that that's a deal breaker, like for a lot of the teams. I mean, it totally depends on, so when you apply for job, like the jobs that you see on, on LinkedIn or on the Amazon job portal, usually the teams specifically mention if they require someone with a Python skill set or not, right? If the team works completely in Python, right? Where And if you don't have any experience of any scripting language, R, Python, whatever it is, right? Then it might be difficult for you, uh, you know, to get a call, right? Or, I mean, or if you get a call, right, it might, dif might be difficult for you to crack the interview unless, you know, you can demonstrate that in some other way, right? So it's not a rule that everyone who's, uh, you know, interviewing for a B or a BI role has to have a Python experience or a, any, I would say basic level of scripting definitely helps, but it's not a deal breaker. Thank you. So I think Ankit had a question. Ankit. Yeah, hi. So uh, my, hey, uh, so my question is, uh, SQL is very much important for BA and BI roles. But uh, what if someone doesn't have that much experience into like visualizations or dashboard? So uh, will he still be considered for BA or BI roles or no? So reporting is, I would say like the first thing is you need to understand data, right? So for that, you definitely require SQL, right? So if the person yeah. meets the SQL bar, right? Yeah. They would have some way, some kind of knowledge of, you know, interpreting the data and visualizing it. It doesn't have to be that you've worked on Tableau or you've worked on Excel or specific tool, right? If you can, you know, demonstrate that we have some other leadership principle or we have some other skill set, then definitely why not, right? As as a BIE, I currently, like we own the Tableau server right now, but I didn't have any experience on Tableau, right? It was okay. all like, it, it's all self-learned, right? But I have worked on Excel or whatever other tool, right? So if you do understand some kind of visualization software or, you know, you know how to show the data, right? Tell your story, basically. If this is the data set that you have, and, you know, leadership wants to understand how did my sales do last week, for example, versus the previous week or, you know, in the training four weeks or training 12 weeks, whatever it is. Okay. If you can show that in some way, right? Because, I mean, not all leaders want to see numbers, right? It could also be some kind of visualization and makes it easy to understand, right? So if you can do that, you know, if you have any kind of basic experience, that should also help. But yeah, we, we don't look for, you know, like extreme level of Tableau expertise or, you know, click view or quick side or quick side or whatever it is, right? If you have any basic knowledge of reporting uh, and if you can understand how do you want to tell your story, interpret your story and show it to the business leaders, then I think that should be fine. If you can demonstrate that through your interview, then why not? And so just one last question. So uh, as you're saying, so I have one experience, one year experience in India, but I don't have any experience of reporting. I have experience in SQL uh, and the cloud, but uh, so I have done uh, like dashboarding and reporting stuff in throughout my masters. So mm -hmm. will that count or like that should suffice, right? Or no? I mean, yeah, it, it does suffice. It also depends on like what kind of like reporting that you've done like in your masters, right? Like, I mean, if it's just creating one report, then you need to show in another way that, you know, you can, you're someone who can learn this on the go, right? You're someone okay. who can gather that skill while, when you're, you know, put it into that situation, right? So, I mean, you should basically understand how how the thing works, but then at, when you're actually working, you do have Google, you do have, you know, different sites where you can learn those things from, right? So we don't expect someone to, you know, to know the whole uh, reporting suite in and out, right? They can always learn on the job as well. But yeah, some kind of reporting experience definitely helps. So for both the roles, for BA and BI? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Great. I think Sachin had one last question, but before that, I want to give, since he asked a couple, uh, anybody else who haven't spoken so far, do you all have any questions? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Somebody. Uh, hi, Abhishek. Hey. I have a very weird question. Like uh, my applications goes under consideration and I always see like my application is under consideration, but I didn't receive a call. Like I was not applying so aggressively, mm -hmm. but I like, if I change my resume, do you think that will go out of that? So I, it totally depends on the, uh, I mean, it depends on the role. It's possible that sometimes the role is already occupied, right? It's already given out to someone else, right? It's not just updated on the back end. That's why you might be seeing that the, the you know, that your job application is under 
you know, review or whatever it is, right? Uh, at other times, it might have been reviewed by the recruiter, but they probably might have not felt that you're the correct fit for that, right? So, I mean, tweak the resume may or may not make a difference. So it's, it's really difficult to tell that. It totally depends on the team. It totally depends on, uh, not in the team, it totally depends on the role, right? And your the way your resume is, right? If you have this, you know, the correct skill set that the team is looking for, and if you can demonstrate that on your resume, I think that, that should help, right? I think the other thing that could help is also reaching out to the recruiters and finding, you know, getting, uh, understanding which are the other roles that are open in that organization, you know, that they could help you with. Uh, it's possible that, it's highly possible that that role might have been filled out, right? Because at Amazon, we have a lot of BA, BIE openings and sometimes we have pulling recs where, like pulling requests where, you know, there's a generic BI role, which is open to like the entire organization, right? And then that gets filled out, right? So it depends on that. So there are a lot of variables in here. So there's no like straightforward answer to that. But yeah, I think the best person to answer that would be the recruiters, right? They would they would have the answer of why your resume is in the review process for the last X weeks. Yeah, okay. Like I, I thought, like what I have heard, I, I don't know whether that's a rumor or not. But what I have heard is like, if you didn't receive from them like in in a week, then you are not selected. So they, they are not selected. Yeah, like it might be under consideration, but that's all because I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure about that, but I don't, I don't think that might be true. It's just that the, the volume that we, the, the volume of requests that the recruiters get is super, super high. And, you know, I've even before, right? Well, I mean, I've seen that, you know, that there are like hundreds of applicants responding or like reaching out to recruiters on LinkedIn or applying on the job portal, right? So it might be difficult at times to go through all the resumes that the, that the recruiters have received. So that might be causing the delay, but at the same time, it's, I, I would say like, you can reach out to any recruiter that you know in Amazon, and then you can ask them to, you know, find what's the status on that. And if not, give you like an alternative link that you can apply to, or like any other role that's open that they know of, because there are several roles that are open. So some of the other recruiter might be able to help you with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And it also depends on uh, like, were you, did you already interview with them or this is like the uh, first so... time? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I didn't interview. Like, uh, to be honest, I, I didn't apply so aggressively. But uh, I, like, I applied, like, to, like, somewhere around 10 to 15 roles. And, uh, like, four to five applications went under consideration. And uh, two of them, like, they are, they are now in archived. And uh, three are still under consideration. But I, I don't know when can I expect to hear from you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer, like a straightforward answer to that. I think the best yeah, okay. person to answer that and, would be that. Uh, and as you mentioned, like uh, you guys work some, like you're in supply chain team, right? In BI. So, and and I, I and I mentioned to you earlier that I was from med background, mechanical background, and I shifted to this IT thing. And uh, my prior work experience is related to database uh, in supply chain, as in but we were using a lot of inco terms there. Like it was a full turnkey project, like from starting to the end. I'm not sure what kind of, but I think that's an e-commerce brand. So it might be on a different, like, uh, do you guys, like generally asking, do you guys use inco terms and all these things? Inco terms, I mean, DDP, DAP, like the one that are being used in trade industry. I don't, I, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dhruv. I think we are one minute through. And I mean, just a, a tangent little bit, just a minute or less, you can answer this. What is the role of referrals in this, Abhishek? Because there's also a question that we keep getting. So referrals is this, I would say it's a way to expedite the process. Uh, sometimes the, the, let's say there are like 50 you know, resumes that are there in the queue, right? With the referral, the hiring manager would, you know, understand if it's a referral or not. And again, like it depends on the, the intake mechanism of, of that specific team. So there are times when the the recruiters might be doing the initial processing of the resume uh, and then it comes to the hiring manager, right? So in that case, referrals are definitely do help, I would say. It definitely helps. And also like, if you if the person you're referring, the person who's referring you, if they know, they know the hiring manager or uh, someone is just, I would say it's just like a quicker way uh, for your resume to get noticed, right? Definitely. And then after that, it's all it's all fair game, right? Like even if you have a referral, it all depends on the how you crack the phone screen one, phone screen two on site, right? Uh, but it's just a way to get there quickly, I would say, or get your resume noticed faster. Yeah, 
Got it, got it. Great, great. So with that, uh, let's wrap up this session. Thank you so much, Abhishek, for your time. 